Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick review of the Terry Pratchett Diary by Terry Pratchett and friends aided and abetted by the Discworld Emporium. Dane reads... So, you may be wondering why I'm reviewing a diary, and it is literally a diary, like, that you keep your appointments in. But it also has a bunch of Discworld quotes and illustrations, like there's Susan, Death's granddaughter, and it also has some, like, essays from people who knew Pratchett in there as well. So I'm going to do my usual, I'm going to read the blurb, then I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. So, so Terry Pratchett left us far too early in March 2015. To celebrate his life and works, we've given over the 27 Discworld Diary, which will be a perennial diary, to remembrances and tributes from some of those who knew and loved him and his extraordinary body of work. Contributors include Neil Gaiman, A.S. Byatt, Terry Pratchett's literary agent Colin Smythe, co-author of the Long Earth book Stephen Baxter, Steele I. Spansinger, Maddie Pryor, and many more, with an introduction from his daughter Rihanna Pratchett and an afterword from longtime friend and colleague Rob Wilkins. And uh, yeah, so as, as I say, because it's a perennial diary, it means that you can use this any year. It, like, it doesn't have de uh, names to go with the dates. And uh, there's a, a 29th of February that you can cross out as well. So here from the introduction from Brianna Pratchett. I always associated Dad with nature, like a sort of kindly druid or overgrown hobbit. And where I grew up in Somerset, there was plenty of nature around. We lived in a little pink cottage on the edge of a valley with goats in the front garden and chickens and ducks in the back. Dad taught me how to spin wool and milk goats. You know, the kind of abilities essential for a young woman making her way in the world. He sometimes used to let me collect the goats from a field on the other side of the valley. It was only years later that I found out that he actually used to watch me the entire way from the top of the hill. So here we have a quote here from Witches Abroad. This is Grebo, between you and me, he's a fiend from hell. Well, he's a cat, said Mrs. Goggle. It's only to be expected. You hear that, Biggie? Fiend from hell. And uh, so here's one of the remembrances from Roger Payton, which I thought was great. Andromeda was fortunate to have a signing with Terry for virtually every book from 1985 to 2001. At one signing in the late 90s, there was a queue all around the shop and one woman was talking very loudly in an upper class voice whilst waiting. When she got to the front of the queue, she said, Oh, Mr. Pratchett, it's so good to meet you. I love your books. Tell me, where do you get your ideas from? To which Terry gave his regular reply. Oh, from a little man in a shop in Cornwall. Normally this would amuse the customer, but this lady then said quite seriously, Oh, where in Cornwall? I'm down there shortly and can get some ideas myself and start writing. Quick as a flash, Terry replied, He's out of stock at the moment. I just bought them all for my next book. So another great quote, this one's from Hogfather. Education was a bit like a communicable sexual disease. It made you unsuitable for a lot of jobs and then you had the urge to pass it on. And then we have Paul Kidby who did a lot of the cover design, so I want to read his remembrance. Working with Terry was a life-enriching experience for me, both professionally and personally. He had so much to say and do, books to write, orangutans to save, campaigns to wage. His creative energy was irrepressible, always questing and dynamic, brimming over with ideas and plots that needed pinning down. Never wanted to sit back, he had so much he wanted to do, and in the final years, as he was all too aware, there just wasn't enough time. If I could speak to Terry again, I'd thank him for writing the books that inspired me, and for the belief and encouragement he showed me by giving me this fantastic opportunity to illustrate his writing. I'd thank him for the laughs and friendship we shared too. I find consolation in Terry's own words from Reaper Man. No one is finally dead until the ripples they cause in the world die away. I know that Terry's family, friends and fans can take comfort that the ripples he created will keep moving through us and into the future indefinitely. And just the last thing I wanted to remember, this illustration of uh, Pratchett shaking hands with death, and shaking hands with death is uh, the name of one of his books. It's actually a transcript of a talk that he gave. Um, but this is actually what was posted from Terry Pratchett's official Twitter to announce his death. At last, Sir Terry, we must walk together. Terry took Death's arm and followed him through the doors and onto the black desert under the endless night. The end. So yeah, I think this is like a must-have for any Discworld fan. It's definitely a collector's edition, but it's actually quite useful as a diary as well. I mean, I'm not going to use it as one, but you could. And I assume the idea is to keep it just in print for perpetuity, you know. Uh, very moving at times, definitely worth reading. And it's, it's a pretty quick read as well, like... You know, probably half an hour, an hour or so, but um, just the essays in it alone are, are worth getting it for. So I gave it a 4 out of 5. So there we have it, that's what I made of the Terry Pratchett Diary by Terry Pratchett and Friends. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.